Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man Challenge. Now, when we left off, we were just running around, tackling some bandits, getting our enterprises up and running, just basically getting a really nice foundation for the mid-game, because we have very only recently entered the mid-game, and we are trying our best just to kind of stay alive for the moment. And the mid-game in Warband lasts a pretty significant length of time, because... It really depends on what you're doing, of course. You know, sometimes people are going to be able to make their own faction extremely quickly. They're going to be able to do that after, I don't know, 50, 60 in-game days. But that is literally only if you are playing on a much lower difficulty. Playing on a lower difficulty makes it a lot easier to create your own faction really, really fast. And with campaign AI the way it is, with my damage modifiers the way it is, and with the general rules of the challenge which is what we're doing right here we're doing the iron man challenge of course it is quite difficult to create my own faction because let's just say that if i were to try right now and do it i would have to be either the luckiest son of a gun on the planet right at that very moment or i would just have to <laughs> i don't even know i would have to be able to take out a hundred of the enemy's units by myself, which, let's just say, is probably not going to happen realistically. It really isn't. And uh, that is, uh, that's the reality of it, you know? That is the reality of it. There's really just not much I can do about the, uh, the possibility of creating my own faction right now. I know I saw a comment. Uh, I saw a comment that said, why are you taking so long to create your own faction? That's the thing. Uh, I don't know whether you understand the, the, uh, the rules of the challenge or anything like that, so I'm just going to explain it again, just because maybe it's not clear. But anyway, the point is, if I die, so for example, if I reach zero HP, I think I've actually mentioned this in previous episodes as well, so apologies to those of you that have already heard me say this, but anyway, the point is, is that in general, if I reach zero HP at any point in a real battle, and even against bandits and, and, and muggings and so on and so forth, even if that happens, then that is indeed a game over. Because, let's face it, uh, well, it, it really depends on the uh, <laughs> depends on the actual description of the event itself. So if I do get mugged and they say, oh, you know, they just take your, your money and they don't actually kill you, then I will just abide by what the game says is a fatal action. Whereas if I'm in a battle, like for example right now, with some Kurgits, and they eliminate me, that is a death. That is me dead. And that's that's it. That's it. And people in actually in the comments have been talking about how I may be able to continue the series. And there are a wide variety of different things that have been suggested. For example, uh, me uh, throwing away all of my all of my equipment throwing away all of my companions and all of my units and basically starting from the very beginning with the exception of having my experience still intact. So I'd still have a reasonably decently leveled character, but other than that I would have to, you know, recuperate my resources in every single respect. Because right now I've got a pretty decent army. My army is not bad. You know, it's not the strongest thing ever because it is, of course, not the largest in terms of numbers or anything like that, but it is very good in terms of what kind of quality units that we have. And I'm going to show you uh, them in just a second, because I've been doing a lot of battles against Tega Bandits and Sea Raiders in my off-screen time, because I felt like, hey, you know what, I'm just going <laughs> to just gonna try and get a bunch of that out of the way so you don't actually have to see that as much, because, of course, in an Iron Man challenge, I kind of have to fight bandits almost all the time if I want to try and stay alive because unless I see a, a vassal that is significantly injured in some way I'm not going to be able to tackle them you know it's just how it is anyway I'm just going to send my guys in to do an auto resolve and we're actually helping a Swadian vassal right now which is actually kind of cool but anyway as I was talking about beforehand the rules of the Iron Man challenge basically are that if I die then that's it that's the end of the series and I think we're going to keep it like that because in the grand scheme of things, that keeps the tension high, you know? It keeps the tension high because if the series were to continue after I, you know, get myself 
eliminated in some way, you know, most likely a lance to the face or, you know, Rodok crossbow bolt to the face or something to the face at the very least, then uh, it's not as, and I, and if I were to continue onward, you know, by le letting all my gear go and, and things like that, then it doesn't give you that much tension because then everyone's just like, oh, okay, well, you know, you can just continue onward after you die. So it's not really a big deal. You know, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So I think we're just going to keep it as as it is, and I will just try my best not to die, <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, we have rescued a vassal from the Vagius, which is really cool, and uh, yeah, th this is actually really cool. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not really going to benefit that much from this because I don't have that many that many uh, spaces in my army at the moment, but I do have a number of spaces in my prisoner's hold, which is quite nice. Now, hopefully, uh, to uh, those those people or person, I I can't remember whether it was multiple people saying why am I taking so long, but basically that's that's it. That's the reason why I'm taking so long. Or technically, I'm not even taking that long because it is ten episodes so far, and usually I take a lot longer to create my own faction, and I usually will play on slightly lower difficulty settings because I'm not going to play with campaign AI on high most of the time unless I am explicitly telling you that I'm playing on high then it's probably not going to happen because I just hate the grinding. <laughs> I hate the grinding in the game that results as a result of uh, campaign AI being so high. It really is kind of frustrating at times. And so it's usually not a good idea to have that on such a high difficulty. But yeah, anyway, uh, speaking of high difficulty, there we have it. That is my setting at the moment. And we are... Ah, Alayan actually has leveled up, which is really nice. So I'm going to be getting him another point in charisma here, getting him some more leadership, because mm, you never know, we might actually be able to do something with a faction soon. And as I was saying, it's only it's only episode 10, or this is technically episode 11 that I'm recording right now. And generally, I would take quite a while to uh, get these... Uh, get these things rolling, you know, because, I mean, especially in native, it is kind of difficult to gain party capacity. Party capacity is quite hard, with the exception of just leveling up your leadership. And, uh, I mean, we have 284 in Renown, which is decent. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it is pretty low in comparison to some of the other people in the game. So, for example, if I were to look at Boyar Belgaru, for example, he has 536 renown. So, as you can clearly see, he's got a lot more. This guy, on the other hand, Boyar Bracha, only has 288, which is about the same that we have. So, you know, there are vassals with about the same amount of renown that we do, but maybe he has a higher leadership, or something along those lines, or maybe he doesn't, and maybe he's only capable of fielding the same kinds of units that we are. But the point is, is that if I were to play on a lower difficulty, I could probably create my own faction round about now, probably. Round about now, maybe a little bit a uh, little bit of time ago, a couple of episodes ago, maybe I would have been able to. I haven't actually tried creating my faction as, as fast as possible. Maybe it would be quite fun to try that at some point. But I know that there are some crazy people out there that uh, are really, really fast at creating their own faction. And uh, as far as I'm aware, I think there's like a speedrun record, which was done in like a couple of hours, <laughs> if you can believe that, a couple of hours or something, creating their own faction. Actually, wait a minute. I think it might have been in under 30 minutes or something. I think it, the world record might, might have been broken relatively recently or maybe in the past couple of months. And in my opinion, that's just insane uh you know that's just really really crazy and definitely you're going to need to either have an, a super hardcore amount of luck or you're just going to have to be you know practicing 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 about these things all the time because let's face it warband is not exactly a science game you know it, there are going to be times when you are going to get screwed over by rng in some in some cases so for example let's say that you were playing on a lower difficulty of campaign ai right now you'd probably have, I don't know, you'd probably have 10 Lancers in here and maybe 17 Veteran Horse Archers. But as it stands right now, 
there are 47 veteran horse archers and 37 lancers. So even if I wanted to try and take this, it would be very, very difficult because of the amounts of high quality troops in the garrison. It doesn't really matter so much the amount of troops, even though that does, of course, have an effect. But as it stands, it would probably be pretty easy if, uh, you know, as I say, campaign AI was a little bit lower. And of course, if I did not have the stipulation where if I die, then the series is over. Now you can see here, we're still doing relatively well in terms of the amount of cash that we're getting. Uh, yeah, but a couple of people did actually mention that the ironworks, while it does give us a pretty decent amount of profit, think about the ironworks being a dye works instead, and then me just taking my iron and selling it at Ravidin instead. So you would still gain around 500 or 400 to about 500 dinars every single week without having to supply iron and I would also be able to get the increased amount of trade money from the iron itself as well. So that's actually something quite interesting and definitely something that I did not think about. So uh, yeah there's, there's a bit of a good side and a bit of a downside to it I suppose because the good side is that we don't completely swamp the area with velvet and and things produced by our weaver and dye works which i gotta say is actually kind of nice because that makes things a little bit easier for us to sustain the amount of money that we're making because of course if we were to make you know a lot of it if we were to make a lot of velvet or whatever the case may be you know whatever particular good that you're making with your enterprises then you're going to swamp the market and the money that you're going to gain is going to be significantly less. So if we do have the ironworks there, then it might make sense for us to just leave it, you know, just for the moment and see whether we continue to have a sustained amount of money from the Weaver and Dye Works. Because if we do, then I don't think we really need to worry about mm, maybe replacing it or, or whatever the case. But I think it, in general, is is going to be fine for the moment, but I will replace it if at any point it becomes undoable for me to supply with iron. Because at the moment, of course, I am still in this area. I'm still doing battles in and around the territory of Kuror and everything, and that, of course, makes it very easy for me to stop by and for me to be like, hey, here's some iron, you know, sort of thing. Unfortunately, iron has not been in the marketplace in Kuro for quite some time actually for about two weeks or maybe a week now haven't seen any iron there so that's kind of interesting I, I don't exactly know why that would be but yeah that's a bit problematic oh hello I just took a lot of damage right there okay got to be a bit careful now well I technically should have been much careful beforehand but much more careful at least uh, okay let's be careful let's be careful yeah, my, my military hammer, while it is good with some speed bonus, it is kind of bad without speed bonus. So yeah, piercing weapon would probably be really good no matter what, but as it stands, you do need a bit of momentum, or at, le at the very least, some kind of good angle with a blunt weapon. So yeah, there you go. And wow, we've got a lot of, a lot of prisoners, a lot of potential prisoners from this fight. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. We've lost two of our own units to death, which is not bad. Take out that Lancer, thank you very much. And maybe we can take out this one as well. Yeah, oh, oh, we might be able to get him. We might be able to get him because these Lancers sell for, I believe, 180. Ah, unfortunate. Oh, well. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a whole bunch of Lancers that we'll be able to capture here, so that's not too bad. And we'll see how that goes. Now, the main reason also why I'm not really cutting away that much is because I don't want to have you miss anything. So I don't want you to think that I'm, you know, running away from from battles or something like that if I end up getting myself killed or whatever the case may be. So I generally want to kind of keep this straight up because as I've said, if I do die, then I'm just going to end the episode, you know, end the series. And uh, that's just going to be it. And maybe we'll, we'll do some other kind of challenge or something else.
And uh, that seems pretty cool to me. But anyway, let's uh, let's take these lances. Take the veteran horse archers, the veterans from the Vagias. A sword sister is pretty good. And Vagia horsemen. There we go. We are actually able to take quite a few of it. Very nice. And we have some... Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, I remember now. I actually got inventory management, so now I have much more space. But look at this. I actually have... Some better gauntlets. Amazing, amazing that we were able to get better gauntlets finally, isn't it? Anyway, what's going on over here? Not much. Ah, now here is something that's going on right now. Look at this. Okay, so we have a bunch of Vagias that are besieging Sungetcha Castle. Now, this is definitely a castle I would hesitate to take. I really would because, well, can you, can you see why exactly I shouldn't be wanting to take this? Ah, uh, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? There are 76 lancers here. 76 of them. And 119 veteran horse archers. This is exactly the kind of garrison that makes me... Well, if if those were marksmen, VJ marksmen and, uh, and or Nord Huskarls, then I would be quaking in my... Boots. <laughs> uh, speaking of quaking in my boots, hello... Mr. Sanya Khan. You know, I'm actually going to fight this. Yep. I'm actually going to fight this. I did not expect to see him there. I really did not expect to see him. Wow. Okay. This is going to be bad. This is going to be very bad. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of a good demonstration, actually. It's a good demonstration of how incredibly naive it would be to actually start your own faction right now because let's face it if i'm gonna go up against sanya khan right now in a siege defense i'd probably end up losing literally just because uh yeah because these guys are well yeah this is actually kind of crazy i don't think i'm gonna be able to do this uh I don't know. I, 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 maybe, maybe, no, maybe, yes, no. No, I, d I doubt it. I actually doubt this. Highly, highly doubt this. Yeah. I, I don't know what I can really do. Not much. Not much. I'm going to have to retreat. I'm going to have to retreat because I can't really do much more. And I'm going to have to kill people uh, to try and escape because they are going to continue harassing me. And as you can see... Ooh, this, uh, this was a... A brutal mistake. Absolutely brutal mistake. But here's the thing. If I were to go into a siege right now and have this thing happen, so like let's say I was actually able to take something. Let's say I was able to kill all of the garrison and then, you know, oh, I can actually leave? I'm really surprised. I'm actually really surprised. I really would not have expected him to allow me to leave. And he's so slow. Look at him. He is so slow. Okay, this is great. I now don't need to end the series. Maybe, maybe, maybe I do. Maybe I do. He is, he is 0.2 behind me. And look, we have, oh dear. Okay, this is problematic. Oh, thankfully. Oh yes, he's leaving me alone. Okay, that is great. I was extremely worried about that. And you know, if this episode is shorter than 30 minutes, everyone's going to think that I died. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone's going to think that I died. Okay, well, thankfully... We didn't end up losing that many of our knights. That's pretty good. We still got seven of them. And we still got a decent amount of veterans, a uh, decent amount of marksmen and all that sort of thing. And personally, I feel like that was a pretty good resolution to that particular... Oh, oh wow. Boyan uh, Naldera is getting absolutely murdered by Sanya Khan right there. Or at the very least, he's getting chased to... Uh, <laughs> The Netherworlds. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're going to go into the tavern here, see if we can find a ransom broker. I think that is a ransom broker. Yes, it is. Thank you. All right, let's just sell all of this. Yes, yes. Give me more. Thank you. Give me more of these. Ooh, sorts is to sell for 170? That's crazy. Yeah, these things are really expensive. Wow, that's, that's kind of amazing. All right, so... Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, if I were to take something, let's say I were to uh, go over to Kudan right now. Kudan only has 150 in the garrison there. And let's say I was actually able to take it with mm, somewhat minimal losses. So let's say I lost 20 out of my 74. Then I'd have 54 remaining, or around that amount, you know, around that number. 
And then, let's say, Sanya Khan, with his 150, were to show up with four vassals helping him. So that would basically be an average of about 80, 90 units in every single one of their armies. So then I'd basically have 150, and then uh, 240, 300, uh, about 510 or so units, somewhere around there. Probably have around that number against me with 50 units in my army in the garrison, and that's it. That's what would happen if I created my own faction. Because I would have to declare war, you see. I'd have to declare war against someone. I'd have to declare war against the Khanate or against the Saranids or something like that. Because let's, uh, let's just say I really don't... Oh, <laughs> what? Sanya Khan was defeated and taken prisoner by the Vajirs? I'm actually kind of surprised about that. Okay, very good. The Vajirs apparently are doing absolutely wondrous miracles before our very eyes right here. Okay, kind of crazy. Good. Good, good work, guys. Good work. Okay, yeah, anyway. Just going to take this iron. I'm just going to sell the remaining things here. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Then I would have literally 50 units in the garrison there. And I would be up against a an entire army of 500. And then what am I going to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? What am I going to do from there? You know, I might be able to defend for about 200, 250 maybe. It really depends. And that's... Also considering whether I actually stay alive, because I might not even be able to stay alive in a particular siege defense at this moment in time, because I don't have the best gear, my weapon is a blunt weapon still, I am going to be changing my weapon as we progress into mid-game as well, because a blunt weapon, as I've already said, is no good when doing a siege defense, because they are going to they're going to be able to restore themselves extremely easily and quickly uh, if you knock them unconscious only. And that is just not something that you really want to have happen, especially in a siege defense like this. So, yeah, you're, you're going to be hard-pressed to say that that's a good way to go, using a blunt weapon. Even though blunt weapons are, in my opinion, really, really fun to use and fantastic against heavily armored units, piercing weapons are just as good and if you can if you can get a morning star and level up your two-handed weapon proficiency then you can wield it two-handed and you can have a grand old time so it is actually pretty cool to do it like that but yeah it, it just depends you know it really depends anyway i am actually going to be recruiting some more volunteers and uh, i might just end the episode off soon because then people will think i died I think everyone thinks that i'm going to die every single episode anyway but yeah, otherwise, let's just take a whole bunch of Swadian recruits right here, and then we'll level them up, or I will level them up off screen. And uh, thankfully, my trainer skill is pretty decent, and as I said in the previous episode, trainer skill is king, basically. As you, uh, as you progress onward in the game, it really makes things, it really makes making armies very, very easy as you go forward, because you're going to be able to, uh, well pretty much go from recruit to militia in the case of Swadians in, as you can see, one day, literally one day right there. And if you have more trainer skill and if you have a lot of companions that have trainer skill, these militia, they're going to level up in another, in another day and they're going to level up into footmen and then footmen are going to level up into man at arms extremely fast and then you're done. And then you have an army that is easily capable of basically dealing with any low tier to mid-tier vassal, which is really, really good. So trainer skill is fantastic. Otherwise, how many do I have now? I have 66. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go into Nord territory. I am going to switch up my army composition going forward now. And we are going to be using primarily Nords and Swadians, and I'm not going to be using as many Vagiers. And there you go. The Carnate has now made peace with us. So I suppose that's pretty decent because uh, we already sold all my prisoners, so I'm pretty happy with that. But yeah, otherwise we gained another little bit of right to rule, which is really nice. So how much do I actually have? I have 60. Yeah, 60 right to rule and 22 honor. 22 honor is actually not that good, so I might have to do 
a little bit more about that. Maybe I'll have to look for some more farmers, maybe do a couple more guild master quests to find the fugitive, and maybe just in general try and help. <gasps> What's this? Did we take that? No, no, it's just the HDR mode making me think that it's the same color as Cure Raw. Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.